Hi students, welcome to the online classes of Pragati the school. Let's start lesson 3, The Little Girl by Catherine Mansfield. Let's have a small introduction. The Little Girl You always feel that you know your parents very well. If they are strict and don't spend enough time with you, you assume that they don't love you. But that is not so. Through the story, you shall come to know about the care and love parents have for their children. I shall read the lesson and explain children. To the little girl, he was a figure to be feared and avoided. Every morning before going to work, he came into her room and gave her a casual kiss, to which she responded with, Goodbye, father. And oh, there was a glad sense of relief when she heard the noise of the carriage, growing fainter and fainter down the long road. In the evening, when he came home, she stood near the staircase and heard his loud voice in the hall. Bring my tea into the drawing room. Hasn't the paper come yet? Mother, go and see if my paper's out there. And bring me my slippers. Kezi, mother would call to her. If you are a good girl, you can come down and take off father's boots. Slowly, the girl would slip down the stairs. More slowly, still across the hall and push open the drawing room door. By that time, he had his spectacles on and looked at her over them in a way that was terrifying to the little girl. Well, Kezi, hurry up and pull off these boots and take them outside. Have you been a good girl today? I did it, don't know, father. You did it, don't know. If you stutter like that, mother will have to take you to the doctor. She never stuttered with other people, had quite given it up, but only with father, because then she was trying so hard to say the words properly. What's the matter? What are you looking so wretched about? Mother, I wish you taught this child not to appear on the brink of suicide. Here, Kezi, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. He was so big. His hands and his neck, especially his mouth, when he yawned. Thinking about him alone was like thinking about a giant. On Sunday afternoons, grandmother sent her down to the drawing room to have a nice talk with father and mother. But the little girl always found mother reading and father stretched out on the sofa, his handkerchief on his face, his feet on one of the best cushions, sleeping soundly and snoring. The little girl always found mother reading and father stretched out on the sofa. She sat on a stool, gravely watched him until he woke and stretched and asked the time, then looked at her. Don't stare so, Kezi. You look like a little brown owl. One day, when she was kept indoors with a cold, her grandmother told her that father's birthday was next week and suggested she should make a pin cushion for a gift out of a beautiful piece of yellow silk. Now listen to the explanation, children. Kezi was a little girl who was scared of her father. She felt relieved when he went for work. When he returned in the evening, he ordered his mother to get tea, paper and even his slippers. Kezi's mom would ask her to take out his boots. She came down slowly and by that time her father would have his spectacles on and his look was terrifying. He would ask if she had been good. She answered that she was not aware. She stammered when she answered. Her father looked so big, especially his mouth when he yawned. She felt he is a giant. On Sunday afternoons, grandmother forced her to have a chat with her parents, but she found them busy. One day, when she was at home, as she had cold, her grandma told her that the following week was her father's birthday and she should make a pin cushion as a gift for him. I shall continue reading the lesson, children. Laboriously, with a double cotton, the little girl stitched three sides. But what to fill it with? That was the question. The grandmother was out in the garden and she wandered into mother's bedroom to look for scraps. On the bed table, she discovered a great many sheets of fine paper, gathered them up, tore them into tiny pieces and stuffed her case, then sewed up the fourth side. That night, there was a hue and cry in the house. 
father's great speech for the port authority had been lost rooms were searched servants questioned finally mother came into kezi's room kezi i suppose you didn't see some papers on a table in our room oh yes she said i tore them up for my surprise what screamed mother come straight down to the dining room this instant and she was dragged down to where father was pacing to and fro hands behind his back well he said sharply mother explained he stopped and stared at the child did you do that no 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 she whispered mother go up to her room and fetch down the damn thing see that the child's put to bed this instant crying too much to explain she lay in the shadowed room watching the evening light make a sad little pattern on the floor then father came into the room with the ruler in his hands i am going to beat you for this he said oh no no she screamed hiding under the bed clothes he pulled them aside sit up he ordered and hold out your hands you must be taught once and for all not to touch what does not belong to you but it was for your birthday down came the ruler on her little pink palms hours later when grandmother had wrapped her in a shawl and rocked her in the rocking chair the child clung to her soft body what did god make fathers for she sobbed here's a clean hanky darling blow your nose go to sleep pet you'll forget all about it in the morning i tried to explain to father but he was too upset to listen tonight but the child never forgot next time she saw him she quickly put both hands behind her back and a red color flew into her cheeks now the explanation with a great effort she had made the pin cushion but she took some papers left on the bed table to fill the cushion when father came home he searched for the papers but they were missing he began questioning everyone at home her mother came and asked kezi she accepted she had torn and used them mother brought her to where her father was he was so angry that he ordered to take kezi to her room at once after some time her father came with the ruler and bet her though she told that it was for his birthday kezi began questioning why god had made fathers grandmother consoled her and put her to bed but she couldn't forget even the next day i shall continue with the lesson children the macdonalds lived next door they had five children looking through a gap in the fence the little girl saw them playing tag in the evening the father with the baby mao on his shoulders two little girls hanging on to his coat pockets ran round and round the flower beds shaking with laughter once she saw the boys turn the hose on him and he tried to catch them laughing all the time then it was she decided there was different sorts of fathers suddenly one day mother became ill and she and grandmother went to hospital the little girl was left alone in the house with alice the cook that was all right in the daytime but while alice was putting her to bed she grew suddenly afraid what will i do if i have a nightmare she asked i often have nightmares and then granny takes me into her bed i can't stay in the dark it all gets whispery you just go to sleep child said alice pulling off her socks and don't you scream and wake your poor pa but the same old nightmare came the butcher with the knife and a rope who came nearer and nearer smiling that dreadful smile while she could not move could only stand still crying out grandma grandma she woke shivering to see father beside her bed a candle in his hand what's the matter he said oh a butcher a knife i want granny he blew out the candle bent down and caught up the child in his arms carrying her along the passage to the big bedroom a newspaper was on the bed a half smoked cigar was near his reading lamp he put away the paper threw the cigar into the fireplace then carefully tucked up the child he lay down beside her half asleep still still with the butcher smile all about her it seemed 
She crept close to him, snuggled her head under his arm, held tightly to his shirt. Then the dark did not matter. She lay still. Here, rub your feet against my legs and get them warm, said father. Tired out, he slept before the little girl. A funny feeling came over her. Poor father, not so big after all, and with no one to look after him. He was harder than grandmother, but it was a nice hardness. And every day he had to work and was too tired to be a Mr. MacDonald. She had torn up all his beautiful writing. She stirred suddenly and sighed. What's the matter? asked her father. Another dream? Oh, said the little girl. My head's on your heart. I can hear it going. What a big heart you've got, father dear. Now the explanation. The MacDonalds lived next door. They had five children. The father of those children played with them. Kezi watched them intently. Suddenly one day, her mother fell ill. Grandma took her to the hospital and had to stay overnight. Kezi had never slept without her grandma. Alice the cook made her sleep. She had a bad dream. She called out her grandma. She woke up screaming. She saw her father holding a candle. Seeing her condition, he carried her to his bedroom. She crept close to him and held his shirt tightly. He asked her to rub her feet against his legs and get warmer. He was so tired that he slept before her. She realized that due to the hard work, her father would get tired and sleep. She even came to know that he had a big heart. Now, what did you understand, children? Parents are always loving and caring. They have reasons if they aren't spending time with you. You must understand them. After all, they work hard for you. Thank you, children.